um, there needs to be some leadership shown by, by, by somebody. Good evening, sir. G'day, William. No, uh, you, you, Larry, sorry. You, it's all right. Uh, you, you're, backing, <laughs> you're backing the union here, uh, Mr Shearer, are you? No, I, what I said, and, and you, uh, you, you, you uh, quoted me correctly, is that I was really disappointed to see where it had got to today. I think the big losers here are obviously the workers and their families. Um, it's going to be the ports of Auckland, but the ports of Auckland is, going, is owned by um, Aucklanders, and ultimately Aucklanders, and particularly Auckland businesses, uh, are, are going to be the, the big losers. You say that um, you're not backing the union, but you've had some of your MPs picketing with uh, some of these union members, so clearly you're backing the union here. Well, there's a number of our MPs, obviously, who have got close links to the unions, but I can, I've, I've said to you uh, before, and I'll say again, that uh, my stance on this is that very much we, we want to see good, secure work for all, uh, at all the, the workers that are there, and that's, that applies right across the board, actually, to all other workers across New Zealand. But these workers had a chance of good, secure work, and they lost that opportunity. Well, let's, let's just go through. Well, I don't know if I've lost that opportunity, but it seems to me that this, this was a, obviously a bargain uh, process that was going on between two sides. And, uh, and I understand that I, I was out, so I, couldn't, I wasn't able to listen to your previous interview, but I, I don't know if you've had the, the union to, on to, to give their side of the, of, the, uh, of the argument or not. Well, we know what the union's argument is, and it's around greater labour flexibility and something they called casualisation. I'll talk about that uh, in a moment, but you're suggesting in your press release that negotiations weren't conducted in good faith. How do you come to that conclusion? These, uh, this union rejected nine different offers, which all look pretty fair and reasonable. Well, I, I think this is the reason why I would argue, Larry, that you probably need to get the union on to give the, 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 their side of the, de of the, of the uh, story, because I don't know the full details about it. I, haven't, I don't follow this you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. But let's look at, you know, let's look at the... The, the port, um, from a stand back and look at it, 37% of all New Zealand containers go through in and out of this port. The guys down there work 24-7, including Christmas. They get one week off in three. Um, they've been continually over the last uh, year or so been lifting their productivity um, in terms of you know, their, their, their movement of containers. We've got a productivity um, in there of, of about 6% in Auckland. It's about 6.3% in Tauranga. And Tauranga is a different sort of port. Well, isn't it anyway, funny that hang since... On, hang on, hang on, no, no, no. But you, 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 no, no, no. You're talking about pro productivity. Let's come in with the real facts here. Isn't it funny then that since they've been striking, productivity at that port has gone up 25%? <laughs> OK. Well, there's been, I understood that there was a lot of containers taking days and days to come through uh, come through that port. But... but, but the, these, this Auckland port is more productive than, than many of the ports in Australia who have got um, contracted out labour. So look, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to get in a, in, a, in, a, in a fight about who's right and who's wrong here. All I'm saying here is that it, if the fact that it's come to this, that the port is likely to be closed or certainly going slow for the next few weeks, um, and then after that, who knows how, uh, if there's going to be that improvement because we've got no guarantees there's going to be any, any improvement. Who loses in this deal? How much is it costing Auckland ratepayers to have this dispute going on? Well, you're moment? suggesting there's going to be a loss here, but over time with the increase in productivity... Can you guarantee that contracting out is going to increase... Uh, yeah, I will. Yeah, right here, right now. Yes, I will. Quite obviously it does, David, and no. you know it does. No, and, look, and I, let, I just, I'm asking the question. Well, let, well listen, let, any figures. You, uh, you, uh, ask, figures. answer this question then. Here's the thing. So here's the what was negotiated, David. Yeah. David, here's what was negotiated. The Ports of Auckland wanting greater labour flexibility. What is wrong with the Ports of Auckland allocating labour to when ships arrive instead of having wharfies lying around on their bums doing nothing? What's wrong with that? Is that what happens at the moment, is it? It is. Have Working 28 been... hours and getting paid for 43. And, and you know that for absolutely Absolutely. Sure. Here's this casualisation process nonsense they've been talking about. The offer was for 160 hours over four weeks guaranteed. That's an average of 40 hours a week. That's full-time work, David. Larry, I don't know the, the details in, in, in all of this, and I, and I, and I don't right. want to get in, in, in okay. a okay, OK, OK, OK. We'll cut you some slack so, there. I, I mean, I don't... You, you I've think... To Tony Gibson. I've spoken to the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, the, the union. I've spoken to, to Len Brown. Um, I, what I've said was that what we, try, what we need to do is to avoid a dispute which closes down our, our ports. 
And I'm looking now at a dispute that's probably going to go on for several weeks, and I'm looking at a massive cost to Auckland. How much of the redundancy is going to cost? How much are we losing in the port now because the port's not working? How long will it take before this, we, we make up, if we do, because we, I don't, I'm sorry, but I don't necessarily, uh, I haven't seen any figures that will tell me that productivity is going to go up as a result of contracting out. Do you think the mayor should have stepped in? Look, I think there's, if there's a role to be played by anybody within, in a leadership position, the council is probably the one because ultimately they are the owners as of I, the yeah, as, I, as I understand it, the legislation prevents that. Is that correct? I, I honestly don't know, but I would have thought that given that the two sides are unable to get to, get to an agreement and we've now got a port that's closed, um, there needs to be some leadership shown by, by, by somebody. Well, yeah, it's not totally closed because independent contractors are working the port and ships are coming in and going well, out. Well, they're, com yeah, they're coming in to some de de degree. I mean, there are, there are some, some wolfies that are working on the non-container port that are, are being uh, pushed across into the container oh. port, that I which is what I understand. Well, I, um, I, I thank you for coming on the program and I appreciate uh, it very much.